Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Elena Bobbio, and I'm very grateful to represent my Italian forensic odontology team from the University of Turin. Our research is about NATO and military dentistry, from dental fitness to forensic odontology identification. As we all know, NATO stands for North Atlantic Treaty Organization, and it's a military alliance of 30 countries. It promotes democratic values and enables members to consult and cooperate on defense and security in order to solve problems, build trust, and prevent conflicts. NATO standardization agreements, uh, known as TANEX, are normative documents that record agreements among several or all NATO member states to implement a standard with or without reservation. Next, please. According to NATO, military personnel must undergo medical examination regularly, and they are required to access their health and their dental status before going on mission abroad. The aim of the Stanak 2466 is to create standards for dental fitness um, and um, uh, among military uh, personnel in order to reduce dental emergencies on deployments. Next, please. The aim of our study is, the, is to create an archive of dental data, which can represent a tool for identification in case of tragedy, that is the death of military personnel. Next, please. Um, dental fitness refers to four oral health conditions categorized into four scores. Dental fitness class one, uh, where the oral health conditions are good, so there is a low risk of dental emergency. So military personnel don't require dental treatment. Uh, dental fitness class two refers to uh, military personnel who may require dental treatment. So, uh, but as well, there is a low risk of dental emergency within uh, 12 months. Uh, third class, military personnel re uh, require dental treatment. So there is a moderate risk of dental emergency within 12 months. And class three includes patients currently under care for a dental condition with that if the treatment is not completed, the patient would likely experience a dental emergency. So those patients are, um, are, are called potential emergency patients. There is also a class four where patients are not considered deployable. So uh, the archive of dental data antemortem uh, refers to the collection of odontogram, uh, X-rays, so OPTs, periapical X-rays and bite wings. Uh, also dental impressions of the patient are very important to make the identification easier. And nowadays uh, we also use for our identification face photos and selfies. So this archive can represent a tool for identification. Uh, dental records, in fact, are used as one of the primary identifiers in case of tragedy. Next, please. To this regard, Stanek 2464 um, refers to military forensic dental identification provides guidelines on the process of recording antemortem and postmortem data. Next, please. When there is a disaster, uh, we, we have an antemortem section, so the reconstruction of last clinical dental status from dental records. Postmortem section, 
through a dental autopsy. So that is uh, examination and compilation of dental evidence from remains. And the final comparison of AM and PM data to state the identification. So we can have possible outcomes. The next, please. There is identification, identification probable, identification possible, excluded, or insufficient evidence. Next, please. So with our, our conclusion refers to uh, collecting dental, dental data during checkup of military personnel is useful and can be converted identifying data with Interpol standard 2464 standard. Dental data uh, should be archived into a digital and electronic format in order to be accessible from remote mm -hmm. and periodically updated. I really thank you for your attention.